Welcome to another episode of Crime Pace of Botany Dozen. Today we're in central Costa Rica, kind of like northwest central Costa Rica, an elevation of 1,800 feet in the dry forest. Old northwest part of the country, over there by Guanacaste province, is dry forest, as you can see right here. It's hot, it's a little humid, but uh, we're definitely in that rain shadow created by the mountains, so we're not getting any of that precipitation that's coming off the warm waters of the Atlantic. And uh, what we're looking at right there is a cactus forest composed predominantly of Marshallus cereus aragonia. You can see it's uh, blue glaucus and it's got these nice columnar, uh, these nice columnar stems pointing up everywhere. And it's growing on this, uh, look, there's a bunch of little guys. Is that what these are? Yeah, those are little guys. They're little seedlings coming up. How about that? Little seedlings of Marshallus cereus. The substrate here is this uh, limestone, this calcareous kind of shale. Very brittle, obviously a part of an uh, ancient seafloor. So we got an Aristolochia species right there. Not in flower, it's a pipe vine. But I got some other interesting stuff here too, including an endemic agave species. So let's go check it out. This is Terciopelo territory. There's, there's probably uh, fertile ants all over the place here. You know, the one viper species I kind of have no sympathy for. They breed like rats and they're aggressive as hell and generally mean. Let's see what else we got going on. Look, it's a species of Tridax. I wonder if that's Procumbens or one of the other ones. It's a, Tridax Procumbens is a very noxious weed, but it's actually native to Central America and the Caribbean. So uh, anyway, as you can see, I'm standing at the base of a very sketchy and precipitous limestone cliff. There's a rare agave up there, the endemic agave workweei. There's virtually no way to get up there without breaking my ass, so I'm not gonna try, but we're gonna lurk around, uh, you know, just get, kind of driving around this whole area, see what we can find. This substrate's really interesting, though. I wonder what the age on this is. Probably quite old. Oh, look, it's Tacoma Stands, which is uh, very common in horticulture. Big Noniaceae, the Catapa family. I don't, you know, I don't know who's co causing that rock fall, but there's shit falling down all over the place here. I don't know what's going on with that. I didn't see no animal. Maybe there's a monkey or something up there. Yeah, absolutely no way of getting up there. It's beautiful though. It does look very interesting. Let's see, there's another agave species right there, a different one. Workleye though has those glaucous broad leaves. And then there's that Marshallus series right next to it. Which used to be in the genus Steno series. God, they, they all look like they got some beautiful blue wax. I, you know, I live for the wax. I live for the, the glaucous wax and some of these, these succulents. Now, a little further down the road, we're still at that sketchy, crumbly limestone, which is about the only place that this agave is going to be able to grow, being that it needs full light and probably doesn't want to get too deeply shaded out by the forest canopy. But uh, there's no sign of it. Lots of weeds. Got some Plumeria rubra. What is that? Is that, uh, I can't tell what this is up there. Is that balsa? Yeah, I can't tell. It's a lovely day out nonetheless, and nowhere near as hot as you would think it would be. Not as hot as where I live, in South Texas. Yeah, there's no way I'm going up that shit. That's sketchy as hell. I do love limestone, though. It's more like a limey shale. Well, that's uplifting. Someone's got an old school bus. Is that an old hippie bus or what? Where'd that come from? How you get one of those? You can purchase them on eBay or something. Yeah, I don't see any agaves up there. But definitely those rocky outcroppings seems like the kind of habitat. I mean, that's where the other ones were. Who knows what's up top, though? A lot of crotch rockets. You know, the local uh, off-roading community is strong here. We got Bursera simaruba, massive Tacoma stands. It's the dry season. God, it looks nice, but, the you know, the fertile lance is... They got me a little spooked. They just met somebody whose dog just got bit. Very aggressive snakes, supposedly. Oh, there's the native Hilo Sirius way up in a tree up there. Oh, look! Has he got a fruit on it? I can't even tell. You know, I really would like to go up here, but this is just some sketchy rock. This does not seem like it's going to hold very well, and I don't want to die, so... Well, maybe you can go up that way. I don't know. Let's see. God, those cacti look good, though. Maybe there's more agave up at the top. Okay, this is workable. I can work with this. As long as we don't see no terciopelas, no snakes. 
God, that looks nice up there. Look at my little sedan, my little unsuspecting sedan. It's so, it's so disarming. Okay, let's, let's keep going up this. Let's see what we can do. Honk if you love sketchy limestone. See, look at how the roots so, so innocently emerge from that uh, crumbling limestone talus. It looks interesting up there. Holy shit. And these little seedlings are everywhere. Marcello, Marcello, serious? Look at the burst of Simaruba. And that fern looks interesting. Paradise seeds. It, it'll rehydrate once uh, you get some moisture in there. I do love the dry season. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if we can get up this way. Okay, this is working so far. Well, we got bromelia penguins and talansias, etc. You know, once you get up top, it might chill out a little bit. This is one of the dumber things I've done. There are a lot of interesting plants here, though. You can see I got my poker stick. Because these snakes aren't the kind that are gentle enough to warn you, courteous enough to warn you. But we're going to keep going up. I wonder if there's some cool stuff. Just getting down is going to be sketchy as hell. Oh, this sucks. And it just gets steeper, too. I don't see any... I don't see any way up to those agaves, nor do I see any agave on this side. Look at that Marshalla series. Very glabrous. And a nice wax right there, too. Okay, I'm impressed, okay? It doesn't branch too much. It's just, it's a lot of green totem poles in this dry forest. Oh, look, there's a plumeria right there. There's a bunch of plumeria. Those white flowers. Beautiful species, though. Columnar green. You can see the old, where the growth stops, probably for the dry season. Those white striations of wax. You know, I'm sweating like a pig. I got four hours of daylight left. This is not worth it. I'm going to go back down. We'll see if we can find this species in the uh, northwest part of the island. I really do want to see this agave. You got a Fercrea up there I can see. All kinds of cool stuff. <laughs> it's a lot easier going down. This stick was a good idea. I got it just for the snakes, but it's nice for the hiking, too. Rooted in. Look, these cacti are the only thing holding up this entire cliff. The roots of those cacti. Now, what the shit? How do I get it? Which way did I come? I'm going to walk over so I, so I got some cacti to break my fall. You know, I could fall into a stem of spines instead of onto the hard concrete. Or asphalt, rather. Ah, it could have been. Could have been nice. You know, but sometimes you got to know when to quit. Oh, this is a nice butterfly. Bursera simaruba is looking good. Frankincense family. Oh, look, it's spondius. Spondius dulce, anacardiaceae. Those are delicious. Little plum-like fruits. I'm going to get you eventually. Don't worry. It's not over yet. God, that looks like a gorgeous agave species. Yeah, you could see him up there. It ain't happening today. I got a feeling it's not, but this is kind of cool. Look at this. Muntingia calibura. Family Muntingiaceae order Malvales. It kind of looks like a mallow. Initially, you'd think Malvaceae or Rosaceae. Produces edible fruit. Hairy stems and leaves. Five petals, five sepals. The leaves kind of look like an elm. How about that? So close, yet so far away. And this rock is not, <laughs> this was a different rock type, maybe I'd consider, you know, I'm still considering it, but, you know, this is not, uh, I think this might be my own test, my own test of stupidity, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to let it go. That was a Selaginella back there, by the way, that wasn't one of the Zeric ferns from Teradaceae. Yeah, it's just, it's just too sketchy. This limestone doesn't hold. God damn it. Gonna just have to let this one go. It's not often you gotta do this, but sometimes you do, you know, if it means not dying. It's alright, okay. Alright, I'm letting it, I'm letting it go. But the population's here, I marked it on a map, put it on iNaturist. Maybe others can try to kill themselves to get an agave species that's by no means uncommon. Anyway, that's all I got. Have a great your day, go fuck yourself, bye. Oh, there we go. Now, see, I would have felt like a jackass had I broken my neck trying to get to an agave species. It's got an abundant colony that's much less sketchy to get to. In fact, there's some 
right there. So I'm going to go up there and check it out. There you go. Agave workly. A nice population right there. Thank you, Tacoma Stanch. I couldn't have done it without you. See, they put that there so you got something to hold on to. God, this talus kind of sucks. Ooh. What's this minty shit right here? Is that this thing? No. Anyway, there you go. Agave workly I. Ah. Oh, she is a stunner. Somebody's gnawing off parts of the uh, emerging inflorescence up there. What are the shits doing that? Probably rats or something. Anyway, yeah, that's an emerging flower stock. That's a nice agave. It's a nice agave species. Ooh, it's kind of scabbard. Got them nice spines. Now, to the lay person, it might look like every other agave species out there. And I'll admit that it does a little bit. There's subtle nuances. But, uh, you know, when you look at the molecular work and speciation according to different habitats, so your mind starts getting blown. I said, wow, look at those new emerging leaves. Look at the glaucus texture. That's a beautiful species. There's a nice one right there. A lot of crotch rockets. A lot of crotch rockets out today. It is a Sunday. The, uh, OHV community may not be street legal, but they're out here on a Sunday rocking and no one's bothering them for the worst. Look at this. Look at this distinct substrate. Limestone mud. It's basically limestone shale. Massive population. See, I, feel, I like this. This is nice. So we got a orchid over here. And a Tillandsia about the flower. What orchid is that? Yeah, that's a gorgeous species. Yeah, Tillandsia. Look, it's gone to seed. There's the fluff. See, that's how you grow Tillandsia. You take these little fluffy shits out and you put them on a mesh screen in a warm place like under misters. I had a friend who used to grow them in a little, uh, a little uh, industrial kitchen rack, you know, sealed in with a shower curtain in his uh, dining room. But, uh, so this, this main plant will die, but then it's got these offsets, whatever Tillandsia species that is. And then that's how they get everywhere. These seeds just blow out. There's a tiny seed in there, and it's, it's got that those trichomes, those hairs, those dispersal mechanisms all over it. Really nice habitat. What's the snake? What's the snake count right now? God, the whole the whole wall is just coming down though. Nice wasp, and this looks abandoned. It's much better for me. Yeah, look at those. Massive bastards up there. I don't see any seedlings. I don't see any recruitment. Is that a mantis nest? How long has it been since you were at the bottom of an ocean? There's a little seedling. It looks like it fell from Talus up there. What the shit? Yeah, it's already, the roots have already dried out a little bit. It's been out for a while. I'll take this to my friend Paul. And let him nurse it back to health. He's got a little farm. He lives here. You can see yeah, that there's one that died. It didn't make it. Oh no, it's still alive. I'll take this one too. Yeah, see there's little guys germinating everywhere. But the substrate is just so unstable. They all weather out eventually. Look at those roots. Holy shit. That's not from the agave. No, that's from that... Uh, Drought deciduous mimosoid tree up there. There's another little guy right there. I wonder what it's like to be here in the wet season. Ooh, a whole bunch of recruitment over there. Look at those little guys. Who was Workle? Danny Workle? Do you know Danny Workle? Or Stephen Workle? Billy? Billy Workle? Willie Workle. With Willie Workle. This, this species was named after Willie Workle. Okay, a pasty guy, he used to get sunburned real bad when he come down to Costa Rica. Went on a couple spiritual retreats, wouldn't shut up about it. You know, did a whole ayahuasca thing. You know, his friends would roll their eyes anytime he'd start talking about how it changed his life. It was just, you know, really got old fast. Good old Willie Workle, but this was named after him. I don't know why. Seems kind of pointless to me, kind of silly. Look at that guy's holding in there, see? He's, look, he's holding in there tough. Like these guys, right, Paul's got to bring these back to life. Maybe, and then, you know, maybe he could put it at the, the little botanic garden. They got a botanic garden here in Costa Rica? I don't know. It's 
It's gonna be butter. Look, I'm scaring the iguana. Some damn iguana. Some damn lizard just ran off. What is this thing? I'm curious what this is. Is this euphorbia? See, I can't tell. With no flowers or fruits, it's really hard. All right, now I'm late. I'm supposed to meet somebody and I'm late, as usual. See, this stuff's easy. You just walk with your heels down to it. Not that bad. Now I really mean it. That's all I got. Have a rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.